Well, hello and welcome to today's Bible study time. Thank you for joining me to study a little bit of God's Word this afternoon. I look forward to being in it with you over the next couple of minutes, and boy, am I glad you're here to study along with me. Uh, today's passage we're going to be looking at is in Matthew chapter 6. We're going to be looking at one verse, verse 21. Just that verse is going to be our focal point, although we'll sneak back a few verses before that to get a little bit of context as to why verse 21 is our focal point. Uh, so Matthew 6, 21 is our, our main passage for today, and uh, let's uh, invite the Spirit of God to help us as we're going to be studying the book that he authored and uh, have him un unfold what it is he wants us to see and what he wants us to be feeling from the heart level and what our desires are would be from him and for him. So let's invite that uh, now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we have your word and that you have uh, invited us to it together. I thank you, God, that it is in our hands every day and that we live in a place that's free to engage it. And uh, Lord, you have given us more freedom uh, than we realize and with this freedom comes great responsibility and a need to be disciplined. God, help us be disciplined to see the value of your word and to commit an aim and purpose to spend time in it, that you might change and mold us more like Jesus, which is what your design was when you made us, to be like your son. Help us to have a right relationship with you as we hear this text. God, please help our hearts to hear what it is you've said and realize it's not an idea that I came up with or that another human came up with, but this verse is your idea from your mind through your mouth, so to speak, in the hand of this author, Matthew. So Lord, please change us as we consider this point as we go through this day and this week into the weeks and months ahead. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Matthew 6, uh, 21. So just turn with me there. Uh, very brief verse, so keep up. 621, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's all that it says at this point. This verse begs some things to consider. It's just asking us to consider a couple of questions. The first question is this. What is the connection between our hearts and treasure? We have to ask that. Where your treasure is, there is your heart. We have to ask them, how, is the, how are these connected? Jesus is speaking here in this, in this passage. He's teaching from the Sermon on the Mount. He's continued through chapter 5 into 6, and here's where we are. How is he connecting these two, and why? We have to ask, well, what is our heart? What does Jesus mean when he says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be? What is heart? What is he meaning? Then we ask, how should we consider this word treasure? Different people consider treasure a different thing. Some people consider treasure money. Some people consider treasure big family. Some people consider treasure having a swimming pool on a hot day. Some of you right now, probably on Wednesday, June 10th, 2020, are looking for a swimming pool because it's hot out. That'd be a great thing to have, very valuable. But we need to ask what that word treasure means as Jesus wanted us to see its meaning. And then lastly, what do we do about all this? Jesus is teaching this. He's not wasting his time teaching. He's teaching for a reason. And this reason has great purpose and meaning to do something in you and in me that might help us be clearer reflections of him. That's why he's teaching at the beginning. So these are the areas that we're going. This is where we're going today. And before I get into that first question, I just want to read something to you. It's from G. Campbell Morgan. As we're thinking of treasure and thinking of hearts, and thinking that Jesus is the one bringing us into this thinking and asking these questions. He's the teacher here, ultimately. Listen to this man's quote, G. Campbell Morgan. You are to remember, with the passion burning within you, that you are not the child of today. You are not of the earth. You are more than dust. You are the child of tomorrow. You are of the eternities. You are the offspring or a child of God. The measurements of your lives cannot be circumscribed by points where blue sky meets the green earth. In fact, your life cannot be encompassed in the one small sphere upon which you live. You belong to the infinite. You belong to something not finite, but to someone infinite, with no boundary. If you make your fortune on earth, 
poor silly soul. You have made a fortune and stored it in a place where you cannot hold it. Make your fortune, but store it where it will greet you in the dawning of your new morning in eternity. Let that be a little bit of a groundwork as we get into these questions from G. Campbell Morgan. Let that make your mind think. What is the connection between our hearts and treasure? What is the connection here? Jesus is very purposeful in this statement to connect these verses. And the reason is he wants us to be thinking and feeling about things that matter for eternity and things that we do here connecting to eternity. He wants us to be thinking of investing. Let's jump back into the verses just before verse 21 and, and see a little bit as to why uh, this is being asked. Verse 19 in, in chapter 6, Don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus is making this statement uh, connecting hearts and treasure, and he's making this statement connecting these two things in light of eternity. He's thinking of our hearts as being something that's eternal. Our passions will send us one way or another in eternity. Our focal points, our longings, will cause us to be shifting our perspectives to eternity in one direction or another in eternity. And that eternity is, is when spent with Him forever in wonderful, amazing perfection, or an eternity without Him in hell. It's amazing how a verse so small in Matthew 6, 21, has such a wide implication to it. Jesus is speaking about eternity as he's built that up in verses 19 and 20. So let's look at it this way. The connection between our hearts and our treasure are this. Our hearts are what reveal the things we value the most, and the things we value the most is setting us in a trajectory to an eternity with him, Jesus, or without him. This is absolutely an investment strategy by Jesus' teaching. The truth of eternity is what's in real light here. That's what's being spotlighted. Our hearts and our treasure spotlights eternity. Because we are people, as G. Campbell Morgan wrote, that are not of this world. We are here temporarily only long enough to get to the beginning of the longest portion of our existence, as I've mentioned before in Wednesday teaching. The longest portion of our existence begins at the end of this earthly life. And our hearts and our treasure, as connected, have an eternal perspective and consequence. The connection between our hearts and treasure is that our heart reveals our treasure, which points us to an eternity with Jesus or without Jesus, one or the other. There's no in-between. So there's a connection here between our hearts and our treasure, and it has to do with eternity. What our hearts long for is revealed in chasing what it is we treasure. And that should show you today what position you are in, in light of your eternity with God. So let's ask the second question. What is our heart? That's the second question. The heart is the seat of affections. It's the place where we fight to hold close that which is most valuable. And it's not shaped like that. That's a little heart-shaped cookie. Our heart, not necessarily our physical heart, but the, the bed or the foundation of our deepest, most strong affections. This is what Jesus is speaking of when he speaks of the word heart. It is the place that we hold what is most dear and fight to keep. That's our heart. It, it is the place where Maybe your, uh, uh, your affections or your loves, I guess I'll finally say that word, your affections or your loves uh, cling tightly to your value. Um, but your heart is the place where your longings are born. Many of us love our family members. We fight to keep them safe. And I don't mean with our fists necessarily, although we would likely do that to protect and to keep our family safe. Um, our family is something uh, that we love from our heart. We value, we have affection for from our heart. Maybe our church family, some in the church, maybe some others not so much, I don't know. 
But for certain, there are people who we know, even outside of our bloodline relatives, that we would fight to keep close to us or to keep safe. Uh, the place where we fight to hold close that which is most valuable is our heart. And you and I both know the things that you're fighting to keep most are close to you and, and safe and from being tampered with. Our heart is a place where if you're willing to follow the Spirit of, of God's guiding you to look at what's in it, it's the place where you're going to see the things that are pointing to your eternity with God or without God. It's the place where if you open up and look at it, you might just see things that are the exact same things that are the affections of God. Or, if you're willing to look at it, you might find the things that are in it that you're holding on to, because your heart is the, this, the seat of affections. It's the place where your affections cling to and fight for the things you consider valuable, your treasure. You might find the things when you open it up that you look at are things that God's not really that affectionate about. But you have to consider this place where you hold dear and hold things close and hold them safely and fight to keep anyone from tampering with them. You might consider letting God open up and show you what it is you're holding on to by your heart squeezing tight to keep things close by that you value. The heart is this place. It's that place in, in, your, in your soul, your inner being, that you keep close the things you hold valuable. Jesus is speaking about this in verse 21. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. This is a very important eternal thought. What you're fighting to keep from being tampered with has an eternal significance linked to it. Next question we have to ask of this verse is this. How should we consider treasure? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The things we hold most valuable in our heart as our heart and our affections for these things fights to keep everything from dampering with it, those things we hold most valuable, that's our treasure. Our treasure is the map to our heart. Our treasure is what we'll follow in other people to find out their seed of affections, where the loves are born at, where their loves are being kept safe and, and from being tampered with. The treasure is the map that reveals the heart. The things that we hold most valuable are our treasure, and it may include people, places, things, or ideas. It may include people, places, things, or ideas. It's absolutely essential that we look at this right now and realize you treasure something this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time you're watching. You treasure something, maybe multiple things. You treasure, let's just, let's use the most obvious things. If you have family alive and remaining here, you treasure your family. Most of them, or at least some of them. Most of you probably could say there's at least one family member that you treasure. Or you would be able to say likely one who has passed on. You had, you've held great affection for. You loved them. You treasured that relationship. And it was such that you would have done things to protect it and to keep it healthy. You treasured family, people. You treasured places, maybe your home. Maybe you have great fond memories of a home. I know that uh, there's a home in my wife's family that the family had had for 63 years and many memories were made there. They had a great affection for that home. Things, not just places, but things in the home. They might treasure a lamp that's 50 years old that was grandpa's that he made out of wood. And they treasure that. That means something to them. There's value in it. Ideas. Ideas that may be right. The truth of Jesus, that's right. The gospel, sharing the truth of that Jesus is God and saved all those he calls to him on the cross. That's true. That's a good idea. But also ideas that maybe aren't so good. Ideas that we've seen unfortunately unfold in the past weeks and months here in the United States. Ideas that are wicked and God-opposing. Ideas where there's a hierarchy of people's values in terms of other people. And because someone's skin is white or skin is black, they are loved or hated. Ideas can be good, but ideas can also be things that we value and treasure that are wicked. The things that we hold most valuable are our treasure. And our treasure is the map to our heart. And that's where we hold things and protect them. And God is saying, or through Jesus here in his teaching at the Sermon on the Mount, where your treasure is, 
there is your heart. And we know that all of this has a perspective that is, has eternal weight to it or significance. This verse, this little verse with just a few words in it, I hope is starting to make you think and question, where is my heart? As I'm listening to this guy talk, where is my heart? Where is it right now? And how am I supposed to identify where it is? Well, let's take a look at the things that I value the most. What am I treasuring? It's going to show my heart. What am I pursuing? Am I pursuing my family's safety more than anything? That's important. That's not the greatest idea. That's not the greatest effort. God's ultimately the one to protect them. Are you looking to try to work just another couple of years so you can pay off your house? Has that become really your focal point and your treasure, that which you hold dear? Because that would make things easier for you? Well, God's the one who controls your finances ultimately. He's the one still who governs every penny on earth. Where is your treasure? What are you valuing? What are you holding most dear? What about your heart is trying to keep what you hold most dear safe? What are you holding dear that might not be bad in and of itself, but it's become such a great focus and treasure to you that you've shut out what God would have you do in or with this treasure? Because you have a better idea of what to do with it, and you're afraid he'll do something different. That fear is not trust. That's pride. That desire for something other than what's going to carry you into an eternity where you will have reward every morning that's new, that's not longing and trusting in what God will have for you and give to you. That's trusting in yourself. Your treasure leads to your heart, and your treasure and your heart have an eternal weight to it. It's, it, it's linked to an eternity with God or without it. So where is your heart? Where is your treasure, or what is your treasure? What are we going to do about this? Realize something. Our hearts reveal where our treasure is. We don't put our heart in the right place with our treasure. Realize this. We do not put our heart in the right place with our treasure. Our hearts reveal our treasure. We don't get something and then that makes our heart right. God's the one who cleans your heart. He's the one who desires to give you desires that are His. Consider Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. What are the desires of your heart in terms of what God wants your desire to be? He wants you to desire Him more than things here because they're of the earth, which is corrupt, and we're rust and moths destroying, and thieves breaking and steal. He wants you to desire things that are eternally significant and will not break down. Treasure in heaven, namely Him. Being in His presence, not just going to a place that's great and not this place, but to the place where He is because He's that valuable. So the question is, do you treasure things here hoping that he'll provide you a treasure in heaven, or do you treasure him here, confident that you have him, the greatest treasure, here, and he'll give you even more clearly his presence and proximity and closeness in eternity? Jesus is speaking some really weighty words here, and he wants us to see that we do not put our heart in the right place with our treasure. Our treasure reveals our hearts. We fight to keep our treasure, whether it is right or wrong. So fight for what God considers valuable. That's what we're going to do with this. We fight to keep our treasure, whether it's right treasure that God's honored by, things that he values, or it's wrong treasure. We still, as humans, fight to keep our treasure, fight to, to maintain hold on the things we consider valuable. God would say for us, fight for the things that are valuable in eternity and for that purpose, for eternity's sake, fight for that. And what we're going to find through all the writings of Paul, we're going to get into this in the weeks ahead in Wednesday Bible study. But the thing that God wants us to see and wants us to value and wants us to chase after and protect in the seat of our affections in our heart and to make a treasure is Him. And the connection we have to Him is faith or belief. So I'm going to close with this verse. Fight for what is most valuable, the fight of faith. Fight against anything or anyone who keeps your heart chasing treasure that reveals a heart that is not protecting your belief and trust and hope in God. Fight it. Anything that comes down your way. 
anything that is laid on your lap, anyone, anything that anyone presents to you as worthy to begin pursuing and focusing your great affection or love or, or hope in, fight against that, including rights that you have. And I mentioned last week in our Proverbs study, in chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, if you are right about something in a relationship, practically speaking, if you're right principally, rather is what I meant to say, don't be practically wrong in your principal rightness. Fight to be humble and go low in humility in circumstances where you may be right principally, but in a relationship, that person who you're right with, who maybe has wronged you, must see Christ in you, and they won't if you're not going low and being humble. Treasure that. The thing that God would value the most. Your image of, of what Christ would be in a circumstance in your relationship. Fight the good fight of faith, Paul said. Fight for your faith to be vaulted. To increase and trust in God. Fight for that. Take hold of eternal life, which you were called when you, were, when you made your confession in the presence of witnesses, Paul said to Timothy. Take hold of eternal life. Paul is saying, fight to keep your treasure, hope in God. Psalm 42, hope in God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Hope in God. Fight to keep hope and trust and confidence in Him at the base of the seat of your affections or your heart. And then take hold of this eternal life that your heart is linked to. Take hold of it and make it something that is your daily focus. I have eternity to spend in heaven with you. God, what can I do now to reveal this truth, this great treasure to the world around me who may or may not have a connection eternally with you through loving you and treasuring you the most. There'll be a day when you stand in God's presence and he'll look at you and he'll say, where your treasure is, that was where your heart was. And that treasure being kept safe and fought for in that heart was me. God hopefully will say this to you someday. And he'll say, because it was me, well done, enter in. Keep in mind the weightiness of your treasure in your heart and protecting what it is you treasure and the, and the significance and connection to eternity that it has. This is an introduction to uh, what we're going to be talking about for a few weeks in Wednesday Bible study. And that is what we believe, what we really believe. Not just what we say we believe, not what we tell people we believe. I'm afraid most, most of the time or much of the time we, uh, we talk to people about what we know not necessarily what we believe. If where our treasure is, that is where our hearts are, then our treasure should be very evident. If we trust and hope in God and we keep that safe and we protect it and fight for it, the way Paul is saying to Timothy, it should be evident what our treasure is. So this brings us to the point where we ask the question for next week and opening up again. What is it we really believe or have faith in? Or who do we have faith in? Is it someone we just know about or is it someone we really believe in? So we're going to go there next week. Uh, we're going to see what God has to say to us in some texts that have to do with faith. And we're going to see if we really do value him the way we say we do. And really test and that God would, in our Bible study time, sharpen us and shape us and challenge us and make us really question the things that we really hold valuable and do a, 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 little, a little quiz on ourselves and say, God, do I really love you more than things here? Do I really long to spend time with you like I long to have downtime in the evenings in my chair at home? Do I long to spend time with you that way? Do I long to spend time with you, God, like I do the person that I'm dating that I really love right now? I can't wait to be with him again. Or I can't wait to go to the beach again on vacation. Oh, I love going to the beach. It feels so good to be there. Do I long to be with God in his presence there? These are questions that have to do with our faith and if we really love what we say we believe in. So we're going to talk about that next week. Until then, God bless you as you commit to the truths in his word and look forward to seeing you in the days ahead. Bye-bye.